Hey, True Believers, Englantine here with another segment from our four-hour live stream we did the other day. In this case, we're talking about what the most famous male feminist had to say about the Punisher. And I thought it was a lot of fun, and I think you'll have fun with it, too. Once again, joined by Dalton. That's going to be the case in all of these. So just kick back, relax, enjoy, and let us know what you think about it in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe, like, and share. So let's go over this Punisher thing just for fun, since it's here. So what would Josh Sweden do to the Punisher? I have no idea. Who 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 thought that was a good idea? Okay, so this is... um. This is the Joss Whedon thing. What he thinks about the Punisher. In Meta Messages, I explore the context behind using reader Dan, um, Dan Jack's term, Meta Messages. A Meta Message is where comic book creators comment on references the work of another comic book creator. That's not... How is that Meta? Oh, in the round, I give you context behind one second. What the fuck? Ta stop talking about Meta Messages. Uh, we, we look at Joss Whedon ta ta taking his views about the Punisher into pages of Runaways. Okay, here you go. This is just, just get to what he's saying. Meta messages. A meta message is where comic book creator, you don't need to have that. That's, that's just, uh, I don't know. I, sometimes I, I have to criticize the way they write these articles. The Punisher is clearly always going, going to take issue with to a certain extent as we have seen in the work of garth ennis the punisher really is a character that works best when he is not part of an overall comic book universe despite the fact that obviously he debuted he debuted right smack in the middle of the original clone saga in the pages of amazing spider-man the yeah, problem is that as that doesn't really that doesn't really follow for exactly that reason he really does work well when he comes to uh, with other people. And also, I apologize about the dog barking in the background, but there's not much I can do. Um, no worries. So so he, far, it's not it's not a problem. He he whines every it, time someone leaves the house and doesn't take him with them, and you um, can only smack him upside the head so many times before he just keeps doing it. Well, yeah, don't smack your dog upside the head, man. Uh, let's. As created by Jerry Conway, the Punisher was a decent adversary for Spider-Man, but in the context of Spider-Man's world, the Punisher really only works as an adversary. You know, someone that Spider-Man might be forced to team up with in a pinch, but otherwise will hunt down just the same as any other murderer that Spider-Man has come across. The issue, of course, is the Punisher was so awesome that fans wanted more and more of him, and he became basically an outright superhero, just a superhero with who still kills hundreds and hundreds of people. I, I prefer yeah, that, him to be that's fair. kind of an anti-hero myself, but that's just me, and I don't mm -hmm. I don't read enough Punisher to really have an opinion necessarily. Well, so. No, I, I could be remembering it wrong, but I think for a while they had him firing dumb dum bullets. So it knocked yeah. people down, but it didn't actually kill them. Um, I, I think that at least was at the beginning when he was just becoming the superhero rather than the villain. Because in the in the beginning, he was treated like a villain. Uh, let's see. The dichotomous nature of the character, hero, but also killer, has always lent itself to stories that were not directly, directly involved with superheroes because it just gets too messy. It makes Spider-Man look a little bit... We should have Wep for this discussion. He's the big Punisher fan. Yeah, it makes Spider-Man look I'm like... I just thinking that. We need, yeah. we need some weaponized nerd rage up in here. It makes Spider-Man look like a bit of a sap if he just lets Punisher operate freely. This is the basic position that Josh Whedon took years ago when he said a rather popular quote, here's why I'm not running Marvel. If I was, I would kill the Punisher. I don't believe in what he does. The Punisher just shoots up places, and if you're telling me he's never hit an innocent, then I'm telling you that's fascist crap. Yeah, 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 go hit on an intern. Whedon's well, views on I, Marvel I, I characters. Mean, I mean, I respect that he has that strong of an opinion on it, and it does seem like he would actually respect the more stereotypically heroic characters, which uh -huh. we kind of need in this day and age. So, like, even though for the sake of the Punisher, I disagree with him, this kind of okay. devotion but you, would actually be beneficial to comics in general at this. But point. you and I are focusing on the wrong words. So, or, or on different words, I should say. 
Uh, you, you are looking at what he said about the Punisher. But I, I was looking at, and if you're telling me that he's never hit an innocent, yeah, no, the, 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 that's the fascist tie, crap. That, the, if you yeah, have tie, a different opinion about it, you're a fucking fascist. Yeah, that's what he did. Back said. to fascism. Like, I was no, no, not, not yeah, the Punisher. I don't, like that. I don't like that either, but like, I, I tried to give him some kind of benefit of the doubt because otherwise we'd just be sitting here whining about how fucking irritatingly anti quote unquote anti fascist has become a virtue signal in this day. Well, and yeah, and... see that's that's what I focused on because what he's saying is if you have a different opinion than him, that's fascist crap. Anyway, he goes on to say Whedon's views on Marvel's character didn't really matter much when he was wasn't writing any fully. He did start to write for Marvel. His most famous work, famous work, excuse me, Astonishing X-Men series with Joss Whedon. But he also took over Runaways from Brian K. Vaughn for an extremely short run that began in Runaways 25 with our, okay. The Runaways uh, open, opened the issue trying to work out a deal with Wilson Fisk, the king pin of crime, as they are now technically the successors of their parents' criminal organization known as the Pride. Doki, that okay so i would kill off the punisher but i would have my heroes deal with the biggest crime lord in the marvel universe okay consistency <laughs> we got it no <laughs> well, well, oh gosh i hate it when i didn't do you ever say something in like uh earlier i mentioned you know jack and diane but do you ever say something and then it reminds you of the the, the a song yeah. Got it. Now I got in my head. Hot chocolate. We got it. Hot, hot, hot chocolate. Yeah. From uh, Polar Express. Yeah. yeah. There is only one rule. Never, ever let it cool. Hot, hot, hot chocolate. The runaways agreed to obtain something for Fisk, but when Chase and his dinosaur old lace are in a building getting the object, they realize that they are about to be hit by a missile. They jump out of the building just in time for old lace to use her claws to slow down their fall while holding Chase in his mouth with those sharp teeth. Okay, yeah, I got to see this. He holding. You are kidding me. Because here, here's the page. Yep, and those teeth are going through. Whatever. Missile turns out I was fired by the Punisher, and he is irked that the Kingpin has kids working for him, but he's willing to willing to deal with it. Let's see. Ah, oh, fuck it. I'm, I'm done with this. Forget that. The, the, I'm done with that. That's just too much shit going on. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me, before we get on to the next story, go to this, uh, the, go to the comment section. So what do we have here? Uh, go work or go broke or get punched in the head by some random minute. Nah, I'm not, I, I don't want to go any of those, but have fun black. Uh, Professor Pixel, anti-hero is the perfect term for him in uh, in the show, at very least. Uh, stop using real-world logic on a fictional character. Eh. I, I like disagree it. with that. I think logic should be omniversal, if I'm honest. Um, yeah. It, it shouldn't, it shouldn't necessarily know. matter what universe you're in. Basic logic is still basic logic. Or- Weren't we talking about this a little bit a, a little bit ago? Was, was it Grant Morrison who said... Uh, stop growing up or something like that about you know it's a comic book character let it be a comic book character implying that implying that there's something inherently inferior or inherently on un- i'm not implying anything comic- no no I, I i was i was talking about him like the i i always i always get i always get annoyed by basically the the soft bigotry of artistic low expectations like people well, automatically assume that comics are like a lower art so we don't have to take them seriously oh or- no no i don't and i don't think grant morrison would say that but here's here's my point if you're going to talk about real world logic in comic books eventually you're going to get have to get to the point where people are flying people are shooting laser beams uh, out of their head that uh, there's not 24 hour a day surveillance whenever, you know, I mean, we've got things that could follow the Punisher around, mm-hmm. you know, well, the, I mean, there's especially in one, once you, drones and shit. Yeah. That would have, yeah, be it, it just, line, though. 
if if him being hunted like the running man yeah okay so maranya saying technically there's a tradition at marvel to turn villains into superheroes example wonder man quicksilver scarlet witch clint barton yep yep so punisher being the the lines are the lines are a lot more blurry in marvel than they are in dc but none of them were really murderers. Uh, uh, Punisher, I remember in one P- uh, Peter Parker spectacular, Spider-Man was shooting people because they littered. Littered. That's a crime against uh, c- civility or something like that, and he would shoot them. Uh, so, yeah, there was a time when he was just going nuts about it. Um, so my opinion is v- invalid? No. Never was a fan of runaways. They're forgettable at best. I agree with you too. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I even watched the show. I was like, eh, "It's all right, it's all right." Yeah. But that—that's how I felt about run. My kids love the Runaways, but I always thought they were okay. Mm, they're all right. Are you going to talk about Black Mask and Birds of Prey? I don't have that story up, but yeah, Black Mask is going to be the villain of Birds and Prey. Of Prey. It it'll be interesting to see them adapt uh, Black Mask because Black Mask is a cool character who doesn't really get adapted all that often. Even in yeah, like animation and shit. Well, he's brought up in the video games, even the Batman Arkham series, a couple of times, and they never do anything with him. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, no, no, he was in the uh, Origins, but yeah, still they didn't do anything with him. Yeah, he. I think he was in the the Batman from like WB way back when in a couple episodes, mm-hmm. but that's as far as I think he's ever been, like. Off, off the top of my head, adaptations of him have been the video games a couple of times, um, that those series of episodes in the kids WB show, and I don't even think he ever showed up in the um, in the Paul D. Niebuhr's Tim DC animated universe, which is weird because they're very good about representing a lot of more obscure characters. That's basically the entire reason why. Uh, Justice League Unlimited became Justice League Unlimited instead of just another season. Just hmm. I did not know that. Yeah, they wanted to. They wanted to um, expand to show more, to show more of the uh, obscure and like second string characters. Which, being as those are usually my favorite characters anyway, I was totally in favor of, especially because that gave us the as yet definitive uh version of dr fate which is the one voiced by odette freyer hmm. and yeah oh, I, I i i did the thing where i spun it back to uh one of them yeah, right so, yeah so yep. drink Ang- Ang- anglantine's anglantine's uh assertion does does hold at least some water not an ocean yes. of it but some water oh well, well, yeah okay uh, but yes, once again, if you were playing the uh, Dalton drinking game, drink. Which, which I hope you're all drinking using like really low grade alcohol because if not, you're going to die of alcohol poisoning by the end of this. You're going to die. <laughs> what the hell's going on I, with the? I, I don't want to. I don't want to see anyone get like severe alcohol poisoning because of my mannerisms. But then again, right. the, other, the other part of me wants to go. Well, you decided to make a drinking game based on me. How how much of a good idea was that again? <laughs> so there you go, gang. What do you think? What do you think of uh, Joss Whedon and his ideas for The Punisher? Do you agree with him? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, you want to see more, you know the drill. Click like, click share to get word out about the channel and such. And if you haven't done it already, don't forget to hit subscribe and that notification bell. Cool things happen around these parts. Hate for you to miss any of it. Also, I have a channel, if you're okay with Disney and theme park stuff, go on over to Mad About the Mouse. Link's in the description below. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon. Drop a dollar in the till. Also, link's in the description below. like thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching.